Capturing lease is important to me and, and why I advocate for it is I want this resource to be available for generations to come. I believe that we can play our part in allowing that to happen. You know, handling these fish properly, learning, you know, what are the best techniques and, and, and methods so we can decrease mortality and we can allow these fish to have a better chance at getting back to their natal spawning grounds. Well, that only increases the chance that these fish will survive and reproduce and be there for our kids and our grandkids. A little deeper, eh? We saw that bait, or did the outside tack. We saw that bait at like 80 feet, so I put this rod down to 89. We can kind of moved on outside. Yeah, there we go. Yep. Moved outside on the outside tack. Get the trap ready. Yep. It's good to get some cooperation, huh? A little head shake in there. Yeah, he's still working. All right, ready? There we go. Fish in. Fish in. Yeah, boys. On the Ouija, hey? That's the... Perfect. Nice, bud. That worked. Nice job. Going down to that base. Yeah, totally. yeah. Over he comes. Perfect size for sampling. Nice job, boys. Nice work. Good teamwork. Hooks right out. That's Perfect. That's the hook release we like, right? Yeah. Pass that off here. Yep. So, take a look at the fish here. But you're good. Oh, wrong. Just doing a quick reflex assessment, flipping them upside down, seeing if it'll orient. It's looking pretty good, so I'd say that the ramp is all zeros. Um, I Brendan, did you yep. see where it was hooked when you landed oh, by any chance? You know what? I, I, I didn't. I'm sorry. Okay. No, no, no worries. Oh, I can see it right Did here. you see when you netted him, Martin, where he was hooked at? I got, side, I got the spot here. Okay. Um, so there's a top jaw hook. Top jaw. And there's a, maybe a hooking wound of a one there. And it is a wild fish. So now we're going to measure the length of the fish. Um, so, so it's 62 centimeters in length. A healthy fish there, Quinn? Super healthy, yeah, nice. beautiful. The girth is 38. Get hard. Okay. All right, so now we're going to take a fat probe measurement and what this little tool here does is it measures the relative energy of the fish so this can kind of give us a little bit of a measurement of how healthy the fish are um, and then with this we can use it when we see how well the fish survive and see if that might be a predictor for that here 1.3 and then 0.8 so put the fish in Kind of scoop it up like that. Nice. It's right in there easy. Pretty slick system that, eh? Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> really simple. Just mash at both ends for water Just flow, mash, obviously. So water can go right through either way. Yeah. Flip a little buoy so that the collection boat can find it. Flip it onto the strap here. And then what we also do is put a little tag on the zipper here that Owen is just making right now. The most important thing for this is writing down the hookup time. So that's super important so that they know when to take the blood for the fish. I throw this way. You get that, this rod it's up. The way. Boom. There there she goes. goes. Quinn, great job there. That was, uh, that was pretty cool to watch, man. Oh, sweet. That's a pretty uh, slick, seamless process, right? Like uh, by the time that fish is netted, quickly put into the, the sling that's got water in it already. By the time you do all the data, the, the readings and get them back in the waters, three minutes? Yeah, three, maybe four three minutes, minutes four minutes. minutes. Yeah. And uh, no stress to that fish at all. He's in the water the whole time. Very little, yeah. And especially with the trough being black, it kind of keeps the fish nice and calm and they'll just hang out there and chill. It's great. Right. Yeah, no, he didn't splash around one bit in there. Yeah, hardly splashed around. Just... So that's about a perfect sample size we're looking for right there? That's pretty perfect. It's kind of like the average size. And then we'll also take some smaller fish and some bigger fish just to kind of get a general view of what the fish that we'll be catching and what yeah. people are catching in the fishery. Yeah, well. kind of get the parameters from exactly. the, the high and the wind. Angling, the angling experience. So Absolutely. yeah, this fish is perfect. This is a likely one that you might think about releasing or yeah. Yeah. Um, you might end up having to do so. Yeah. Well, it looks like you guys have done that before. You guys were pretty uh, in tune with one another there. Good job, boys. Part of the study requires blood to be sampled within 15 minutes after hooking the fish. So I joined Stephen and Katie 
of UBC on the collection boat to follow the next steps. Here we go. Snook in the tank. <laughs> So we take blood 15 minutes after the uh, capture events. Uh, for all the fish, it's consistent. So we can look at how the stress has worked the way through the, the fish's body. Um, and then through the blood sample, we can look at different metrics like stress, uh, different ions, different uh, hormones, um, and cortisol. So where do you take that blood sample from? Um, the same spot every time? Like yeah. Same spot, the caudal vein here. Caudal vein, yeah. So now we're putting in a pit tag, a passive integrated transponder tag. It's a really, really tiny little tag that allows us to tell the fish apart. Um, you just scan it with the reader and you get, it gives a unique number. So we, once we have them in the tank, we can tell who's who and link it back to the data. Um, these are also used quite commonly just for tracking fish through their migration. Um, so yeah, lots of ways to use them and we use them to tell the fish apart in this case. And again, always put in the same spot right by the dorsal. Right, ahead yeah, of the dorsal. It was explained to us that after fish are caught, we essentially have a two-hour time frame to get them back to the research center. Is that is that how things are? Yeah, that's correct. We uh, we either wait until we have a certain density of fish, or they've been in there for a certain amount of time. Uh, we don't want to hold the fish in this tank too long because yeah, we yeah. don't want to create more stress for them. Uh, we want this tank to be equal amongst all fish, so they're not affected in different ways because that may affect our outcomes. So just consistency with how long we're holding them and just reduce their overall stress, um, keep them happy, and allows us to have more clear results. This is a tr tremendous initiative that, that you guys have been a part of since day one, and hopefully we can assist by catching a few more. <laughs> That's the goal. Be and uh, yeah, you know, the pressure's on. You know what, when I had that fish on, I'm like, this is the most pressure I felt in a long time. Like they got this, the cradle out and there's water in it. I'm like, don't lose this fish. <laughs> yeah, so to reinvigorate yeah the fish and to get totally. Like, oh, this so is yeah, so we'll, we'll hop back on our boat and, and, and fish again. And then when you guys head in, we're gonna follow you in and, and kind of take it from there. Within two hours of being sampled, the fish need to be transported to the onshore holding tanks at the Banfield Marine Sciences Centre, where their survival will be monitored and compared to the condition they were in after they were originally caught. So how long are these fish in this tank then? Uh, we hold them for a, a minimum of 10 days. So yeah. because this is a four day capture process, there'll be some that are in here for two weeks. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, the, the last day capture will keep them for, for 10 days. And are you that. reading them every day? No, no. Uh, we, uh, in order to, to limit excessive stress or like non-fisheries related stress, we just, we, we check on them every day. If there's yeah. a mortality, we'll, we'll pull them out or we'll see a fish that's uh, got some fungal growth or, or an injury that's really uh, looking pretty severe. Then we, we pull them out as well and yeah. uh, euthanize them. Uh, but for the most part, we just let them be and, let them, and yeah. try and be as happy and calm as possible with yourself. And you can see them starting to kind of school up on the far side oh, there. Yeah. Yeah. So we do have flow in the tanks that allow them just to sort of- Swim it in the current the whole time, eh? Swim yeah. or as naturally as they, as yeah. they can be. And do you guys feed them at all in here? No, no. Uh, they've tried feeding in previous studies and it just leads to really poor water quality. Mm -hmm. uh, and so like we've got, you know, feel this, this is from, from about 30 meters down. It's nice like cool water. 10 to 11 degrees. Yeah. Um, and, and uh, yeah. You know, a 10 day, 14 day period, even for a salmon is is nowhere near gonna be a starvation. Right. Uh, I'm we, thinking about the, when they get into rivers, how far they travel, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. And, and we even hold uh, little smolts for seven days, 10 days at a time. And, and you know, their metabolism is far higher than these fish. And they, it's, they, they don't remotely have the same reserve that these ones would, so. It's such a, it's such a uh, interesting process. To, I mean, I've heard about it for years, and we saw you guys on the water last year, but yeah. you know, to see it from kind of start to finish and you watch the steps and, yeah. and, and there's more to come, but um, it's yeah, awesome, sure. it's interesting. It's a really important question moving forward. Uh, it can, can we utilize uh, catch and release as a conservation method? Is it, is it functional? We need to learn both how many uh, which we're, we're really primarily doing with our tagging work, yeah. uh, and then why, why they're, why they're passing away. And that's, that's the primary focus of this work here. Yeah, it's awesome. It's great. It's fantastic what you guys are doing. So that was pretty, that was pretty quick, man. Like from the time we just caught that last fish, by the time it's in this tank, it's under an hour. Speaking of that, I know tide chains coming up here that's pretty true. quick. So yeah. I know we're going to do a drop Probably. off and we're going to get back out yeah. there. Yeah, All right good. on dude, let's get yeah. some more fish. Let's go. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit subscribe and help support the show so we can continue to make awesome content 
and have you join in on our adventures. Thank you so much for all your support.